The oldest inhabitant desires to be exonerated from any intention to state what is not strictly true as, excepting in a few instances, her own memory has been solely relied on for dates, and many of the impressions having been imbibed in the earliest stages of childhood, even if literally true, may naturally be somewhat vague and shadowy. You didn't hear this from me, but in a lone situation on the left of the old city cemetery sat a large white house. Now that's just a fancy way of saying there used to be this big old house on the edge of the graveyard. It could be seen from almost every point in Lynchburg, and when viewed from Courthouse Hill it seemed to stand on the horizon. Well it probably looked like the Southwest Virginia version of the Bates Motel. Do they know what that is? Ask your parents. Uh, the location of this dwelling was melancholy, and consequently the rents were seldom collected and the taxes were dubious. If you've ever dealt with a landlord or the government, you know that is really saying something. At one time, this Burton-esque residence Tim Burton, not Richard, was inhabited by several poor families and a child in apartment number two upstairs was heard to declare that strange and awful noises proceeded from a small adjoining room. In other words, Molly, you in danger, girl. This child's parent was one day sunning himself in the yard by way of killing time when a strange man in a voluminous, old-fashioned white greatcoat appeared, offering to him the usual salutations with great solemnity. After getting over the shock of seeing somebody wearing white after Labor Day, the tenant was told by the strange man that he had been murdered and thrown into the well which stood in the yard and that if the lodger would go into the room of joining his own, he would find blood upon the floor of that small room, which had been the scene of his murder. If nothing else, I can say it was very nice of that ghost to follow up on his own murder, though I suppose if he was walking around Lynchburg in the 19th century, he didn't have much else to do. This ghost also told the man that he would continue to walk the earth until he was buried in a Christian manner. The ghost urged the lodger to have his remains removed from the watery grave in which they lay. And we all know what kind of curse comes when somebody is left at the bottom of a well. Seven days later, Lynchburg was going to have one heck of a confusing film franchise on our hands. The story of the ghost gained ground. Crowds of looky-loos went to see the bloodstained floor and to listen to the lodger tell all about how he sees dead people. Some actually paid to see the room, whilst many, at parting, would offer a gratuity to the worthy lodger for his work of imagination, proving once again that people have always reveled in the misfortune of others. And when thus encouraged, the narrative improved, fresh horrors being constantly superadded. It seems the lodger yes anded his way into a tidy profit. But the mystery of the bloody chamber was soon unraveled. The room proved to have been the packing room of a large pork dealer, it was found out. And the occupant of the apartment had, on former occasions, not been at all scrupulous about telling the truth, particularly when money could be made. In other words, he would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for those murdering pigs. But that's none of my business. <laughs> 